top five. I hope I spelled this right. Top five under the radar Clemson players for this upcoming season. This is 2022. And I maybe should put 2022. So if somebody on YouTube sees this, they don't get confused. So we'll put 2022 there. So maybe I should put for 2022. I got, you know, I got to do a, a, a real good sentence there. There we go. All right. Top five under the radar Clemson players for 2022. Al, we're going to do it this way. Houston, we're going to do it this way where we do our um, five, four, and three all at once. And then we'll rotate round the, round the horn for our number two and number one. Um, I'll start with my five, four, three. If I can bring it up here. Where is it at? Let's see. Okay, here we go. I got my five, four, and three. You ready? Bring it. So for me, my number five is going to be something as a player that I think is uh, not going to be picked by anybody else. I could be wrong, but under the radar player for 2022, DJ Uyana Lele. I'm going to say he's under the radar because I feel like that he has to perform the best possible option for Clemson is if their five-star guy that they got, that's the veteran guy on the staff, if he shows up and does what everybody thinks, does the opposite of what everybody thinks. Everybody right now thinks he's on borrowed time, he's got four games, He's gone. He's not any good. He's, you know, didn't do good in the spring game. He didn't do good uh, at the end of the season. It was all the running backs at the end of last season. He's he's just a lost cause. Well, I'm going to say that DJ Uniana Lule is not a lost cause, that he's going to be an under-the-radar player, at least at first. And then if he can show that he turns it around, I think it's going to be like, the greatest turnaround in one season for any kind of power five elite quarterback out there. Now, can he do it? It's all up to him, but he is my number five. Number four is Dietrich Pennington for me. He is an offensive lineman, interior guy. We talked, we heard Dabo Sweeney talk about him a ton and how huge he is and how aggressive and powerful he is. We didn't get to see anything from him because I believe he tore his ACL. And now hopefully Clemson will get some added depth, but maybe he can jump in on the scene and possibly be, be the next starting right guard if he is that good. We'll see. We'll see. And then my number three is the position that needs to have some consistency on offense as well, and that is the slot receiver position, Brandon Spector. I want to see what he can do. Nobody really knows what he can do, especially on the national level. I want to see what he can do. So I have one guy, it's obvious, an obvious star, going to be talked about a ton, but still think that he could be an under-the-radar, like, great, you know, turnaround story and then i have those other two guys that are typical under the radar guys that i think could show out because they're of positions of need all right al we'll start with you <laughs> okay so obviously you, you broke the rules at your <laughs> first pick okay so i, I never would have put dj on that list I'm not, I'm not considering him under the radar but i do understand what you mean uh when you explained it so i i'm reluctantly gonna allow it uh but for myself that was not an option as a matter of fact it, this is why it's so difficult to do these lists because under the radar is such an ambiguous term because I didn't even put Dedrick Pennington on my list, which he would have been because he was talked up, you know, the whole season about, you know, be able to contribute. He was having a great practice or spring practice and fall practice. And he tears his ACL or whatever, and he doesn't get to play. Uh, so I, I think we already knew that he was going to be a, a big piece. So I didn't, I didn't count him either. My number five I started with was Tristan Lee. I stayed with the offensive line uh, there. And it's not because I think he's going to come in and be some starter immediately or anything like that. Uh, and he may be for all I know. But, you know, he was a very highly recruited guy. We didn't hear anything from him last year. He had, you know, some work to do to get his body reshaped. And I think he's going to be a solid depth guy. I'm, I'm hoping he's a guy that we see a lot this year because he's going to be important to the future. Uh, so I put him at number five. Uh, number four, and this was another – it's another borderline, you know, whether he's under the radar or not. I put Trey Williams uh, because he was injured most of last year. Uh, and, you know, we have like a solid three deep in front of him of guys that you hear all the time in, in Rook, Davis, and Brzee. So you don't hear a lot about Williams, but I think he's got a lot of potential. I'm putting him at number four. Um, in number three, I went actually with Landon Zanders. 
Uh, you know, he was kind of he was the guy. He he was our safety starting safety. He was out all last season, so uh, or pretty much all last season. So it, we didn't really get to see a lot of from him. And you know, people were talking about before. You know, there were some complaints a little bit about Landon Sanders, and you know, he wasn't quick enough, or he didn't do this good enough. And then we found out he was playing injured most of most of that season. And then he gets completely injured and can't play at all. So I'm really, really looking forward to see what a fully healthy, fully revitalized Landon Sanders can do because I think he brings a, a good skill set to the table. Yep, yep. So uh, <clears throat> I'm going to make this list on the fly. It sounds like everybody did research, but I'm just I'm going to pull him out of the old noggin right here. Number five for me is going to be Nathaniel Wiggins. Um, there's been a lot of talk about this guy over the summer. You have a lot of guys on the team. Um, we talk about the personality of the team. There's a lot of guys that are just saying, look, this dude's a stud. This guy's for real. Uh, so be on the lookout for him. I think that nobody's talking about him. He could end up being uh, someone by the end of the year that could be on an All-American list potentially. Um, number four, I'm going to say a name also y'all haven't mentioned, but I think looking at his, his videos over the summer is going to be a factor on offense. Phil Maffa. No one talks about him because of pace, because of Shifley. Shifley. Um, but if Moffa comes out and, and looks, you know, as, as nimble and, and quick as he is on his feet uh, and he's, he's cut down his weight, he's going to be a problem to deal with. He showed some flashes of that last year. I think he had to work through the freshman is, isms of what that is, but I think he's going to be great next year. Um, so Phil Moffa is my number four. And number three is going to be um, – <clears throat> going to be Jeremiah Trotter Jr. Um, you know, I think he gets lost in the sense that you've got Trent Simpson and Barrett Carter and Levante Bentley and Keith McGuire. This cat is a stud. He's a stud linebacker. And I would not be surprised if there's some formations next year where they try to get him, Trent Simpson, and Barrett Carter on the field. That's a whole lot of speed to be dealing with. Jeremiah Trotter's also got a little bit of pop in them shoulder pads. So I wouldn't be surprised to see him. Uh, really put together a solid season next year. All right, round table number two for me. Houston already mentioned him, cornerback Nate Wiggins. EJ Williams hyped him up on Twitter a few days ago, says he is the real deal, says he's going to take over national media because of how good he is. Obviously, he's playing against him and seen him in practice. So I'm going to go with Nate Wiggins. Al. All right, so Houston, I want to ask you a question. Were all three of your guys didn't uh, uh, were they all freshmen last year? They were, right? Yeah, I guess you're right. Okay, so it, something I did in my list, and again, this goes to everybody's definition of under the radar. I didn't put Nate Wiggins, Jeremiah Trotter, uh, or Phil Maffa on my list simply because I thought if they flashed as freshmen, uh, which mo- all of them did last year at specific times, and you know were built up, you know, in the off season, depending on who you're listening to. I didn't put any of them on my list because I'm not considering them under the radar. But uh, I agree with everything y'all have said about them so far, without a doubt. Uh, number two, I'm going to echo one that Morgan had earlier. I'm putting Brandon Spector uh, at number two because this it's a position we need solidified. So slot has to make some noise for Clemson this year. And, and believe me, I think there's options there. I, I'm not considering Will Taylor under the radar um, because you know he flashed in the early in the early part of his career last year. And, um, you know, I just don't know about Antonio Williams yet. You know, if he's through getting kicked out of South Carolina or not, who knows, uh, you know, how that's going to go. <laughs> so we'll see. But, yeah, I think Brandon Spector is going to be a big deal. And I don't think a lot of people talk about him. I think he gets overlooked a lot. So I'm going to go with him. So, all right, my top two, it's going to be. Uh, just, do, just do number two. <clears throat> just do number two. Okay, okay. Uh, number two. So this person, once again, a freshman, but I don't think he got the recognition that, he needed to until late in the year, and you saw him flash only in the spring game, really. Um, that is tight end Jake Brenningstool. Um, this could be um, probably the best tight end Clemson's had since Jordan Leggett, in my opinion. Um, he's got chemistry already with one quarterback who may or may not be the starter by the end of the season. Hopefully he can dial that up with the quarterback that will more than likely start the season. I think Jake Brainstool, if things go the way that the coaching staff have said where they're going to attack the middle of the field, utilize the tight end more, Jake Brainstool is going to be in for a big year. He is my number one. And especially if Cade Klubnick becomes a quarterback, which goes against my number five. But I think you saw from the spring game they had a little bit of a connection. Fellas, Jake Brenningstool was a higher-rated recruit than Brock Bowers. Get that man on the field and get him the football. Al? (laughs) 
All right, I'm going to I'm going to call both of you out again. I'm not considering him under the radar. He flashed last year in a big way. I think everybody knows what's up with Jake Brunning still. I expect big things from him this year. Uh, and, and this is going to be funny because I think y'all could potentially have some issues with my number one as not under the radar because I think EJ Williams, who was my number one, is now under the radar because we haven't seen EJ Williams in forever. Uh, it's it's been a long time, and I think because of what happened last year and the fact that Bo Collins and Dakar Collins were the guys, and Ngata for most of the year were the ones that were out there all year. Nobody is even talking about EJ Williams, and I think he's got a ton of ability, uh, and I think he's going to flash that this year. I certainly hope so for Clemson's sake, uh, but I, I think he's going to be the guy. I think people are going to remember exactly, you know, who he is and the recruit that he, you know, we all thought he was when we when we signed him, and uh, I think you're going to see a lot from him this year. So everybody's going to hate my pick. Um, because it's going to be very, very much uh, ubiquitous here. I'm going to say my number one is the freshman class. That is the most underrated group. And you can hate it all you want, but let's yeah. talk about this, Okay? Let's if talk we had this. any rules, that would yeah. be against the rules. But Whew. think about this. You have a potential starting quarterback out of that mix. He showed sure. glimpses of being a, a guy that gets the ball out on time in the spring game, has connections and chemistry with some of the wide receivers. You have I'm sorry. We lost Houston there. We lost him. I'm sorry. We lost him. We lost him. We lost him. <laughs> Are we done here? <laughs> Breaking this down, giving analytics here. Two great wide receivers, a great linebacker, two absolutely great offensive linemen who can come in and play. That's why it was too hard to pick one, but they are under the radar right now because they're just simply not known commodities. All the freshmen. Now, I did come out with an article over on the Roar's website and basically looked at the offensive tackles. Houston, you helped me with that this a little bit, but when you look at it, you have Jordan McFadden on the left side. You have Walker Parks on the right side. You probably have... Tristan Lee backing up one of those guys, and then maybe Marcus Tate and uh, Mitchell Mays backing up based on previous depth charts. But really, I wouldn't say every one of those guys are really going to be your next uh, offensive tackle more than maybe Colin Sadler and Blake Miller. So there is an opportunity there, maybe not so much to get a lot of playing time, but they really do need those two freshmen, at least on the offensive line, to start backfilling their offensive tackles that are going to go away. Yep, I agree with that. That's why that's why they're on the list, Morgan. You can hate it all you want. That's why it's on the list. Nobody actually is on the list because you put a group on the list, and which is, you know, like <laughs> I said, there's no rules. It. That's against the rules. There all right, are. so we got a ton of people in the chat, guys. This was a great top five. This was Alan's idea because we used to do top fives all the time, and he loves them, and this is a great idea to do. We actually have done this one every single year around this time. So the summertime is when we do our top fives. We don't do, like, 15 top fives in one in one show like Mickey does, but we'll do one, and we'll, um, you know, think through it. Al obviously thinks through it way more than me and definitely way more than Houston. Um, but <laughs> Al, he is our big analyst here. You said you said you did it on the fly. Don't be mad. You said yeah, you I think that's pretty creative to be on the fly, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's go and look in the chat and see what we've got as far as who has comments on our on our uh, list here. Uh, Mark gets in, fellas. Get it. Get it. Mark gets in at 7:58. Are you telling me he just um, got into the show at 7:58? <laughs> Mark. Huffer, Huffer Billy. Paul says XT will have a great year too. And that goes back to our rule, you know, is XT one of those guys that's an under the radar guy, or is he a guy that nope. should have a great year? It's hard to say. Um, you know, it's hard to say what uh, Wiggins, we're going to see Wiggins shock folks this year, shock folks this year. Dakari Collins. I like Dakari Collins attitude to go get the football. Like our previous wide receiver, Mike Williams. I don't yeah. think anybody picked Dakari Collins. Al, you probably had some sort of eliminating rule that you couldn't pick him. So it's funny enough, I could show you my list and you would you would see EJ Williams dash Dakari Collins. Because oh, I've sure. pretty high on Collins' upside. But I had to I had to choose one. I was like, you know what? I'm not gonna be a Houston. And I'm gonna <laughs> I'm just gonna pick one. <laughs> so I ended up going with EJ Williams. But yeah, Dakari Collins, I think he could certainly show out this year. I think he could surprise a lot of guys. I don't I think he gets overlooked. Bill gets in Tristan Lee, Tyler Venables, mm -hmm. uh, Luke Price, Price. 
Phil Moffa, Drew Sweeney. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know about this one, Bill. <laughs> if if we if Drew Sweeney becomes a star this season, something has gone wrong. Or right, depending on how things go. <laughs> sure. That's right. I don't want any more Sweeney's being starting slot receivers for for half of the end of the year. I don't want to see that. Uh, Peyton Page is a mm-hmm. good one. Cape yep. Hart as well. Al, if mm-hmm. I feel like we've been talking about Cape Hart for years, we got to see this guy yeah. on the field, baby. Yeah, it's it's going to be hard for either one of those to get on the field this year, and that's one of the reasons I didn't pick Peyton Page. He's on my list as well, but I didn't pick him because he's behind four guys that we we know ha- can do it and have done it, and they're going to be your your top four at least. So it's just going to be tough for the defensive tackle this year. Bentley and Brenningstool are good picks. Did we? Did anybody say Bentley? Mm-mm. Nope. Mafia, Specter, Bentley, Wiggins, Brenningstool. Dabo is certainly super hyped on Pennington. RJ Mickens, Brandon Spector, Dietrich Pennington come to mind for me. Got a lot of guys in there. A lot of a lot of people getting in there. Um, a lot of people getting in there and giving their opinions. We appreciate everybody getting in. Mark said, Mark says, uh, sorry I was late. Meeting with the Pope. You know, when I initially read that, I thought it said meeting with the poop. So sorry about that, Mark. That's what Alan does post show. Pre <laughs> show. <laughs> Come on. Pre show. Pre-show. And post show. You got good <laughs> bowel movement there. Um, <laughs> under the radar for Clemson could be RJ Mickens. Mm-hmm. He's not getting much talk nationally. And Makuba. See, I can't say Makuba because he got like a thousand snaps last year. Yeah. Hard for me to say Barrett Carter only because he's a five not star. Under the radar incumbent guy for me like yep. i feel like he's about to take over um our, let me tell you something true or false our linebacking core while losing experience greatly bigly is about to become very very much so more athletic sure yep. i would, would totally agree. agree with that I'm looking forward to the linebacker core and see what they can do. What's your guess on the starting three? Trenton Simpson, obviously, you can't take him off the field. I'm going to say Barrett Carter. Maybe you put him out there, two super fast guys. Then who's your middle linebacker? It's going to be really tough. I mean, I think Levante Bentley has a really good chance to start, uh, but – Man, I, I like the length of, of Trotter. Uh, I like his I like his lateral movement a little bit better uh, than Levante Bentley. I think he's got higher upside, but that's just me. They're both freaks. I I tend to think by the end of the year it'll be Trotter, Simpson, and Carter, depending on formation. You know, it might flip that around. Like I said, to get Malcolm Green in there if he's playing nickel. Um, but I think if you're gonna have three pure linebackers out there, you could have Simpson. Trotter and Carter out there by the end of the season. Which O line when O lineman will surprise our center? Hmm. Who's going to be the center? Is it going to be Will Putnam? It looks well, like it. <laughs> so then, who's going to be the right guard? Is it going to be Dietrich Pennington? Looks like it. Yeah. Could be Mitchell Mays. Right tackle, Walker Parks. Left tackle, Jordan McFadden. Center, Will Putnam. Left guard, Marcus Tate. Tate. Yep. Probably. I mean, that's what we're seeing. Mm-hmm. How did we forget Jalen Phillips? Nobody said Jalen Phillips? What's wrong with us? I didn't forget him. He got in the game a good bit last season. He's, you know, been in the been in the game for a couple of years. I just didn't just didn't consider him under the radar. This will be a special year on a uh, one to 10 scale of specialness. Houston. I mean, come on, man. Come on, man. <laughs> like, well, is, are you going to say seven? No. <laughs> no. Come on, man. 